work it. Come on, come on, come on. I want you to just sit right down and relax. Oh, County, you are gonna stay for dinner. Oh, no, you, I can't do that. I gotta go. Oh, you don't have to go, for goodness sakes. The afternoon is still young. <laughs> <laughs> hey, that's kinda cute. I just made that up. The afternoon's still young. I think I'll write that down. Oh, hell, I'll remember it. <laughs> hey, you know something, Eunice? It's six o'clock. Oh, it can't possibly be six o'clock. You never did have a sense of time. It's six o'clock. <laughs> yeah, we must have stayed in a topsy-turvy bar three or four hours. <laughs> oh, shh. Shh. Not a word about where we was to Ed. As far as Ed is concerned, you and me was at the Museum of Natural History looking at the stuffed buffaloes. <laughs> <laughs> Ed? Ed! Woo! Ed! Well, it's six o'clock. Where is he? <laughs> Ed? <laughs> you remember when we was kids and we used to go over to the museum and look at them stuffed buffaloes, huh? Yeah. <laughs> and then we used to sneak over to the ancient Greek section and look at Hercules' rear end. <laughs> I always like Mercury's better. <laughs> oh, Lord me. <laughs> I'm sobering up. Let's have another beer, huh? <laughs> Ooh. What if I'm out of beer? Oh, mercy, mercy. Oh, say it isn't so. If there is a Lord in his heaven, Eunice won't be out of beer. Whoopee! Yeah, we have some beer right here is the beer. Oh, no. Oh, no, no. What, 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 what's next? Oh, I just remembered. Mama is coming over for dinner tonight. That must be where Ed is picking her up. Shoot. <laughs> Mama tonight. How oh, nuts. I swear there must be some demon in hell whose one job it is is to spoil my fun. She ain't gonna be too thrilled to see me here either. Well, toughies. <laughs> and all I can remember her saying about me when I was a kid was, Get that trashy Midge Gibson out of my house. <laughs> well, Mama always was high strung in them days, you know. Daddy was still alive. She's always on edge. <laughs> uh, forget it. You should have heard what my mama said about you. <laughs> it what? <laughs> oh, who can remember? <laughs> oh, you know, you know, dumb, worthless, face like a scarecrow, da da da. <laughs> <laughs> metal case my mama was. Well, yeah. Hey, listen, Eunice, I ought to go. Oh, no, you don't. You are going to stay. <laughs> I'm on to you anyway. I know what you want to do. You want to go on back to the topsy-turvy and make googly eyes at that curly-headed guy at the end of the bar. <laughs> he was cute. <laughs> Say, Midge? Yeah? You go to places like that often? No, pretty often, yeah. Mm. Of course, lately it's beginning to sort of wear thin. Maybe I should have worked hard at my marriage. Maybe Chuck wasn't such a bad guy after all. Oh, but didn't he get drunk all the time and beat up on you? Yeah, but maybe that was just his nerves. <laughs> <laughs> I guess since your divorce, you've, uh, you've had a lot of, uh, flings, haven't you? Well, every dog has his day, Eunice. <laughs> Hey, I just insulted myself. <laughs> she. I never did have any romances. I, I just can't imagine what it'd be like. What are you getting at? Oh, it's just that I've always thought of love as being like it is in all them songs. You know, like I, I got lost in his arms and I had to stay. And uh, you sigh, the song begins, you speak, and I hear violins. It's magic. <laughs> Is it magic? I mean, I only got Ed to judge by. <laughs> well, I'm no expert on magic, Eunice. I'm still looking for it myself. You know something? You ought to get married, give it a whirl again, oh. and settle down. 
Now, I'm not saying marriage is all beer and pretzels, Midge. I mean, you, you gotta work at it, you know, like Ed and me do. But after all, marriage and a family, well, that's the backbone of the country, isn't it? Well, that's what they say. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I have been thinking lately that my life was not, not really a picnic, you know, waiting on tables all mm -hmm. day and then going home alone at night. Well, most nights, anyway. <laughs> Listen, we're getting too serious. You're right. <laughs> and I know just how to perk us up. Come on, I'm gonna put this over here. Come on, come on, come on! <laughs> you and me, we're, we're gonna do that uh, that can-can step we used to do oh, in school Lord. when we were cheerleaders. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Ta-ra, ra boom ta-ra, ra boom ta-ra, ra boom she'd be here. Now, aren't you glad we didn't stop at the police station? Eunice, where the hell have you been? What you <laughs> I come home to an empty house and call and call and... What? Where you were? Well, listen, let me tell you something. Guess who I had lunch with today? My old friend, Midge Gibson. Midge Gibson? I thought this town got rid of that alley cat. <laughs> she is in the kitchen. Hi, Miss Harper. Well, if it isn't Midge Gibson, big as life and twice as natural. <laughs> really a pleasant surprise. It's a surprise, all right. You haven't changed a bit. Neither of you, Ed. Well, you sure haven't changed either, Midge. Except maybe your hair's a little more bleached. Maybe you're doing your blouses up a little bit higher. <laughs> well, Ed. You gonna say hello to Midge, or you just gonna stand there like a statue? Statue? How does he compare to Hercules? <laughs> <laughs> well, I was fixing to say hello when the fun and games died down. <laughs> well, hi, Midge. Long time no see. <laughs> Midge is gonna stay for dinner. Oh, well, good. Life is just full of surprises, ain't it? Well, I am starved. Let's see what you're rustling up in it here. ain't quite ready. Go on, Mitch. Sit down. I suppose it's too much to expect to have a meal on time once in a while around here. Ed, I am doing the best I can. Yes, now, Ed, let's not be unfair. We can't expect Eunice to stay home and do her duty when Midge Gibson calls and asks her to join her on one of her binges. I'd forgotten your way with words, Miss Harper, but don't worry. I bet a lot of binges that lasted for a week. Could you please go in there and keep my friend some company and be nice to her like I am nice to your friends and keep a civil tongue in your head? You haven't even started yet. I spent all day at that hardware store on my feet while you and this Gibson pizza goods go out on the wing thing. Yeah, that's right. You know what we did? We flew to Paris and back. Now, will you get in there? <laughs> Can't go to Paris in one day. <laughs> right on the big Concord. <laughs> well, Mitch, guess you and my wife had a great old time today, didn't you? Yeah, I haven't seen her this tanked up since the last time you two got together. Well, we had a smashing time. We went to the Green Parrot for lunch, and then we uh, uh, went out driving, and we saw some sights at the museum. <laughs> <laughs> Are you seriously considering pouring more liquor into your body? <laughs> I was turning it over in my mind, yes. <laughs> Perhaps Mama Deer would like a beer. Well, why not? One beer never hurt anybody. I'd like one, too, if you can spare it. <laughs> well, Midge, I run into your mama every once in a while down at the mall. She's always so chipper and uncomplaining. I admire her so. I couldn't be half so brave if my only daughter lived so far away and led the kind of life you do. <laughs> well, some people can live near their mamas. Me, I don't have the stamina. <laughs> well, uh, how do you like Chicago, Midge? I went to Chicago Woods, a bunch of four-flushers. 
Well, I never did meet any four flushes there, but I sure did make a lot of good friends. Oh, I bet you did. You always had a knack for making friends. Well, we are in luck. We got two beers left. One for Mama, one for it. <laughs> Lucky to have that much left, I suppose. <laughs> We really are lucky to have these two left because I think a bunch of elves came in today and drank up all the rest. <laughs> <laughs> well, Mitch, as I recall, you were always the one that had such big plans for your life. Gonna be a model, gonna marry a rich man, gonna live in a villa in one of them foreign countries. Tell me, did any of that stuff ever pan out? No, I guess I was just a flop all around. Listen, Mama, just because somebody's childhood dreams don't come true, that don't give you the right to hint around that Midge here is a failure. I did not say she was a failure. Now, did I say you were a failure, Midge? All I was doing was making polite conversation, and as usual, I get my words twisted all around and thrown back in my face. Besides, being a failure is nothing to be ashamed of. <laughs> Hell, look at Ed there. <laughs> where you are in life, it's your sense of values. Eunice and Ed have a sense of values. They stay home, they raise their children, and they drink in moderation, usually. Uh, how are you boys, hmm? Well, they're out on a camping trip, hoping it'll put some guts into them. Must be wonderful raising kids. Uh-huh. Of course, they tie you down. Yeah, that's the problem with leading a decent and respectable life. It doesn't leave you a whole lot of free time for going off on a toot. That's why I've always avoided a decent and respectable life. <laughs> They're having a good time, aren't they? <laughs> I guess we've had a few too many. <laughs> a few? You may have deduced by now, Mitch, that my mama does not approve of alcohol. Of course, when she drinks a bottle of beer at 11 o'clock in the morning, it's strictly for medicinal purposes. Of course, it was a different story when Daddy was alive. I remember her and Daddy coming home staggering late at night from the bigger jigger. <laughs> You wash out our dirty linen in front Watch of out. <laughs> Look at my jigsaw puzzle. What did I do? You got beer all? I've been working on this oh. sucker for weeks. Oh. I just about got the sky filled in. Now you're going to ruin it. I ruined it? Oh, my goodness. I'm so sorry. But look at there, Ed. The beer gives the sky a real nice color. <laughs> well, I don't suppose you're going to go get a rag and clean it up or something. <laughs> Guess you're just taking a whole evening off. Well, I just may do that. I just might take the whole year off. I just might take my whole life off. I just might go right back this minute with Midge to the topsy-turvy bar. What do you think of that? Topsy-turvy bar? <laughs> you, my wife went to the topsy-turvy? Bet your sweet patootie. <laughs> now look, Eunice, I have overlooked coming home to this house without having a hot meal waiting for me, and you and this person drinking up all the beer and getting my jigsaw puzzle all soggy. But do you honestly think I'm going to overlook the fact that you went to the most notorious bar in this town? She had everybody there was asking for you. <laughs> You just wait a minute. You just wait a damn little minute now, Missy. It's different when a man goes into a bar for a quick beer. What? But when a woman goes in, it's for one thing. What? Well, listen, what's the matter? A woman isn't entitled to a quick beer? Oh, you couldn't. Everybody knew your reputation in school. Gee whiz, neither one of us got picked up, so what are you so excited for? But there was one real cute-looking, curly-haired fella at the end of the bar, and I want to tell you something. If he'd so much as given me a wink, I wouldn't be here right now. <laughs> oh, Eunice. <laughs> and there's something else I want you to know, too. It was not Midge's idea to go to the topsy-turvy. It was mine, because secretly I was hoping to be picked up. <laughs> Well, this chippy no sooner sets foot back in this town and you are talking smut. 
<laughs> smut, 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 smut. <laughs> it is people like her that are causing a downfall of this whole country. If I was your mother, well, young lady... Well, you are not my mother, Ms. Harper, so I have no emotional objection to punching you right in the nose. Well, are you gonna let her talk to me like that, Eunice? Go, go, go. <laughs> made many mistakes in my life, but I have never been deliberately malicious and, and cruel. And if you're an example of decency, sister, thank God I'm indecent. And you, you weren't so high and mighty in high school when you, you were in the back seat of that convertible with me on that double date with Gigi, and, and, and you practically tore off my best sweater. Oh, eh. <laughs> yeah, I finally got away, and after that, he ran after Gigi. Jim had to throw him out of the car. Oh, Eunice, I'm sorry. Oh, shoot, who cares? I'm just surprised he ever had that much energy. <laughs> Listen, Eunice, I'm gonna have to leave. I've had enough of uh, the family unit and the backbone of the country for the moment. But I wanna tell you, I'm, I just wanna say thank you because I was feeling very depressed about my life and now I feel a whole lot better. <coughs> oh, Mitch. Oh, Mitch, I'm so sorry it's got to end this way. I'm so sorry you got to leave. I'm so sorry you got to stay. started, Mother. I'd be real happy to help you, Ed. Thank you. <laughs> 